sparks fly into the air and spread into endless clusters, which Bakugo detonates at multiple nomus. This turns up to nothing but paste, and just then, however, he loses balance and turns as he barely avoids a massive foot which swings past him. The hell? As he looks forward, he finds many more heroes in the giant's path, and so with lightning speed, he moves and takes them out of the way. Oi, Deku! Yeah, don't worry. Atop the back of Gigantomaki, meanwhile, we see the rest of the villains who watch as Gigantomaki swings towards Deku and Rika when his attack is then caught by the spirit, who would expand in size. This doesn't match uh, Gigantomaki, but her strength definitely rivals his as they end up going uh, in a stalemate hand in hand and neither is backing down. Don't touch Izu! Just then, landing on Rika's arm, the brother runs across it and creates a portal as he runs through it and opens another right above the villains. Dabi will then release a cremation blast as he exits. Nice to see you again, kid. Wanna go another round? Shouts Dabi. As he tanks the blow, however, Deku blows away the flames to show he's unharmed and has the same golden aura surrounding him. We can go another round in prison. Just then, Rika gains the upper hand and barely pushes back Giganto Makia, leaving her tired at this point, and so she decreases in size and begins to be sucked back into Deku's innate domain. Sorry, Izu. It's fine, Rika. Thank you. Catch on! Already blasting his way, Bakugo brings along Todoroki, who he then throws towards Deku. He would then be teleported right before Giganto Makia, and with an upward swing sends a flash of ice at the giant, who bashes against it right as a blast from Dabi is thrown at him. But he is then warp, um, warped right before Dabi, who he smacks in the face with a flash fire fist, knocking him towards Deku, who pulls back and punches him while outputting reverse curse technique. As the villain goes to sleep, the others begin a counterattack, and by this point, Shigaraki had awoken down below and found himself surrounded by Endeavor, Gran Torino, Eraserhead, and Mirio. <sighs> you know you're not gonna be enough, right? Instantly, he lunges forward and is met by a counter from Gran Torino, and Mirio says that he's not going anywhere. You wanna act tough, but Deku wore you down. You're at half your strength already. Speaking of Deku, after he and his friends face off against Giganto Makia, leaving the other Nomus and uh, villains to the heroes down below, the villains just hope they can meet with Shigaraki and escape together because the way things are going, he's going to die. Not that heroes would ever kill them, but they will lose. Especially with that overpowered bastard here, thinks Spinner. He then watches Giganto Makia get pushed back by a pulse of red, which knocks him to the floor. Todoroki then uh, freezes him again but he breaks out and finally grows his massive claws as he gains a mask. The three back away, but notice he has gotten a little smaller and his movements have slowed down. Alright, I think I can end it, said Deku. You sure? shouts Bakugo. He then claws towards Deku who flies through his fingers and puts away his blade. His arms are still covered by that steel light armor and he enters his savage-like state by forcing more cursed energy into his brain. Pulling back both of his arms, he then strikes at air and a portal appears below the giant as his hands would then be swung out reinforced by his mother's quirk which knocks him to the sky for a few seconds. Deku then punches again using portal after portal and comes with a hook from the left. How can that tiny kid hold this much power? Thinks Giganto Makia. Then spearing forward as he holds his hands forward, he makes a hand sign reminiscent of Gojo. I won't let anyone get hurt anymore. Take the negative, add positive. Blue and red, disperse everything everywhere, no distinction, turn them into one, Murasaki. As he makes contact, a resounding impact echoes and is so massive that it lashes back against Deku's own body a bit, but 90% of that damage goes towards Giganto Makia who is flown into the air as everyone watches on in complete shock. Once again, Deku had exceeded expectation and it's inconceivable that such an attack would have honestly worked. The giant crashes and tumbles over and over as people avoid him until he comes to a stop and he stays unresponsive as blood begins to leave from his mouth. <sighs> God, I really hate using that, I swear. Having used so much power, he begins to fall but he's caught by Bakugo who is then caught by a slide of ice making it down with the help of Todoroki. Breathe, Midoriya. <sighs> I'm okay. I'm okay. What about Shigaraki? As he asks this, an explosion of dust goes off, and springing to the sky, Shigaraki makes use of his ribbon stab quirk, and the black tendrils would hold up his exhausted body. Deku and Shigaraki at that moment would make eye contact, and Shigaraki opened his mouth wide, as from it, this black sludge begins to leak. The same occurs for his allies, and even a passed out Dabi, who truly hated this method of transportation, was being taken away. Everyone is too tired to stop them, however. 
Even Deku, who is suffering from these massive migraines right now, this battle was over. But these villains would return, and nothing would ever be the same. Tartarus, that very same day, which held some of the world's worst criminals, was left destroyed. What occurs next is a rampaging spread of villains all across Japan. Their wrath is indiscriminate, and with their rampage came the disappearance of many pillars. This includes Endeavor, who was blasted by Dobby's video regardless and is now completely churned against. This was spread by the help of the revolutionaries, and it ruined his reputation and psyche. Luckily, the likes of Midnight survived due to the help of Aoyama, who himself had become a pillar for his classmates. But citizens raged and did so incessantly. How could you do this? What kind of heroes are you? We, we don't have anywhere to go. Watching the crowd from outside, Izuku had healed up and about three days had passed. He was left confused, angry, and saddened. Why? Why the hell am I trying to save you? You all act like your whole world has been left in the dust. I wondered if you ever pondered about how many villains came to be. Why they are the way they are. Why do you get to complain? Midoriya. Hearing his name being called, the boy turns and sees Mirio, who notices his eyes are dead and yet filled with this hate that he could never comprehend himself. Y your mom came to see you. Thanks, senpai. As he walks past him, Izuku asks, What do you think a hero is? They're just scared, Midoriya. I was scared. We were all scared. All they do is stay on the sidelines while, the while us, kids, have to actually work for them. They're just cowards. Not actually helping themselves, but complaining about homes and blaming us. We're not gods. We're just human, but they never learn their lesson. I don't hate heroes because of what they stand for, Togata. I hate them for what they validate in these bastards. They became soft. To them, more entertainment now. How can anyone handle that kind of pressure? We haven't even started our second year yet. Mirio honestly doesn't know what to tell him. And Izuku apologizes as he leaves. And Mirio wonders, what did I obtain one for all for? I'm still so powerless. Cutting back to Deku, he makes his way down the halls as Rika comes out hugging him from behind. Are you sad, Izuku? Very. Rika. We, we might not see mom for a while. She doesn't need to ask anymore to understand what he means. And right then, the mother makes her way down the halls with tears in her eyes as she embraces the only two people she had left in this world. Inko Midoriya was slowly once again reaching her breaking point, and her son could tell. It only made his rage boil harder. Him again. Warping himself away, Deku appears right behind Muscular, who presses Shindo, but he fights back with all he has. When suddenly, the massive villain is then pulled off of him, and he is covered in a soothing energy. All his injuries instantly heal. This rapid healing, it's him. When he regains focus of vision, he sees Deku standing before him, and Muscular being flown away, like about to crash into a building. Stay safe. Deku then warps right before Muscular when Rika then sticks her head out, biting into his arm. Ah, oh, you bitch! He's then promptly punched with such force that he feels his neck twist until he looks behind himself. Like, he's literally looking. His neck twisted. But just as quickly, it is healed instantly. Don't ever talk to my sister like that, you bastard. A black mask then captures the villain and retreats to Deku's domain in Rika's storage. She then relays that they need to drop off these villains because she's run out of capacity. Essentially, what she's doing is using a barrier technique of sorts. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you've seen Rika use this black sludge that can like solidify and hold people. 
She's kind of doing the same thing, except she becomes a storage herself. Like, how she's a storage for all of those weapons representing, you know, Quirk's... Not Quirk's, my bad. Um, I guess, yeah, Quirk's curse techniques. You get what I'm trying to say. She has become a storage to hold these villains like a maximum capacity prison. And because they're about to run out of space, she says they need to stop. You should take a break, please. I uh, will. Just one more. Isu, just one hour break. Good. I'm just gonna worry. Quickly fleeing the scene, he imprints in the mind of Shindo his presence. Is he okay? He thinks. I mean, he's monstrous as usual. What do you expect? But something seems off. Where does the rest of his class? Deku then doesn't return to Yue, but sleeps somewhere dark, an abandoned house. And he also gave a call to his mom. While he may have chosen to do things by himself more, he did keep in touch with everyone. After all, he had a promise to never put his mother through that kind of thing again. But it didn't matter. Even though he kept in touch with his mom and even his actual friends, like he actually called him and shit, they didn't see him physically for months and their calls were very short. And the more time passes, the colder and darker his voice becomes. As he's awoken by the cracks of his safe house letting rain fall in, he abruptly sits up and walks out as he had also heard something alarming. Making his way into the streets, he stumbles upon not a villain attack, but something worse. Hey! The adults harassing the heteromorph turn and see Deku who grips his blade. Back off. Sh shut up, kid. Sh You're that sports festival guy. It doesn't matter. She Does she look harmful to you? I said back off. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Can't you tell you're scaring her? As his voice thunders, they get chills and retreat back before beginning to run off when they realize their mistake. Th thank you. Stay safe. Yui has more room. I'm sorry for troubling you. I was just slow to evacuate. No other shelter would accept me. Though he was planning to just let her figure this out, and head on by herself, he freezes in his tracks and turns as he makes his way towards her again. Thank you. Huh? Uh, you're welcome? You're the only reason heroes still fight, and I promise that this will all end soon. I'll take you to UA myself. And so, he leads her discreetly, and then heads back to patrolling. Midoriya. As he picks up a call from All Might, he asks if he's okay. I'm waiting by the spot. Did you eat anything today? No, I'm on the way. Just then he dodges a bullet and turns to see an enemy from afar. Clearly a hired gun from All for One. But he proceeds with the call, all while he instantly warps right behind her, much to her shock. As he lands, Deku lets her turn her weapon to him and fire point blank, while he just dodges and looks to his right, seeing Chisaki lying on the ground. I assume you also have earplugs in, just like her? No, Lady Nagan or Chisaki cannot actually like hear him clearly, but suddenly these plugs are pulled out as she backs away, turning her hand to normal and covering her ears. I'm not gonna put you to sleep. Oh my, I'll call you back. No, young Midori! As he walks to Chisaki, Deku aggressively plucks out her hair as he ingests it and shows a look of disgust. It's more gross than I thought. It's an honor to meet you, Lady Nagan. Snipe Sensei really admires you a lot. That bastard all for one sent me on a suicide mission, and yet you took it. Why? She stays unresponsive, but the truth is that she had hoped her life would have been taken at this very moment. K kid, you took something from me. All I want to talk to is the boss. I don't even want my hands back, just please. Please. Deku, as he approaches Nagan, doesn't answer him or even acknowledge his presence, but he says... Your quirk, as disgusting as it is, has its uses. A self-destruction quirk. What a sick bastard. Wait, he put a what? What's even the point of a power like that? Damn it. Why did you get put in prison? Asked Deku. It's a long story. I have time. She then describes her experience as a descent into madness due to the pile up of sins she had to bear by herself. Kill after kill made her soul sink into the abyss. A facade of a hero. If you understand my anguish, kid, then you'll end it now. I'm gonna die anyway, right? Self-destruct. 
However, something inside of Izuku changes. I could end up like her. I'm looking into a mirror. He then looks to the city. The cold, uncaring darkness that covers it. It reminds him of how much he misses his friends. I want to go home, but I can't. As he turns, Deku walks off the building and starts falling. Running for the edge, Nagan says to stop when an explosion suddenly goes off, blinding her. He escaped. The detonation wasn't just from Bakugo's quirk, by the way. It was a remnant. A remnant of the quirk etched inside Lady Nagant. Though she isn't aware yet, he just saved her life. As for Deku, he carried on, but sent a special commission back to someone. This someone being Mei Hatsume. In the months that had passed, he had learned to harness the power of his barriers into seals. He knew that if he wanted to make people feel safe, then he had to try even harder, even if he fell deeper into the abyss. This has to stop. Gathering before Endeavor, the entirety of One Nei had come to Nezu's office where the principal was talking to the hero. Why have you been ignoring me, Ashoto? I thought we were going to face Toyo together. Then you keep us in the dark about Midoriya? Shoto, your willingness alone is enough for me, but there are no buts, okay? Even despite not knowing Midoriya that long, even I can tell he can't be left alone. The first time I got hurt in front of him, he panicked. I thought it was funny back then, but the look in his eyes, it was so obsessive, says Araka. He'll do anything to take the burden by himself. He doesn't care what happens to himself. He's an idiot, shouts Bakugo. It's not that deep. All right, he, he's obsessed with the idea. Why the hell do you think he hates the word hero, huh? Did it ever occur to you that to him, it was never about the symbol? He's self-sacrificing to a fault. Like he would say, it's a curse. A curse that he's dealt with since he was a kid. That kind of trauma doesn't go away. No matter what he says, it's bullshit. He's in pain. He's not going to ask for help. Those barriers out there, even if he says they don't drain him, it's a lie. At this point, Endeavor takes out something, and Sarah asks, Hey, isn't that a GPS tracking device? Maybe. He throws aside the machine, and everyone jumps for it, and Sarah was the first to catch it, saying, We're gonna be borrowing this, sir. M maybe it's only been a few months, but Midoriya's our classmate, said Koda. I hope you understand. You're right, said Nezu. He gave shelter even if he could hide at one, but decided to stay out of sight. A true hero to the core. He might not like the word, but he, he's a pride of UA for a reason. I leave it. I leave him in your hands. Damn right, let's go bring back that idiot. Someone should tell Miss Midoriya she's going to be worried sick. Oh, and tell Togato Senpai we're definitely going to need him. Days later, as the rain continues to pour in a certain city, we find Izuku there, atop the edge of a skyscraper, eating some katsudon. He received some from All Might, who got them from Inko. Just by eating the meal, he can feel the anguish that she must have went through all this time. This, however, is interrupted by him sensing danger. Not in the literal sense. After being in so much negativity and the proximity of it and ignoring his own well-being, he has begun to feel exactly where the rise of cursed energy is. It's almost like a binding vow that he did not create himself. It's just a natural way of how things are. He himself is so in the dumps that he basically feels everything. But as a result, his body is literally breaking down. He's just choosing to ignore it. More specifically, when someone is afraid for someone else, he feels it. But right now, he feels a sense of death almost. Like back when he fought Stain. In a flash, Deku blocks the strike of a villain as we find him in a mall. Behind him are innocent civilians and before him are a bunch of villains who freeze in their tracks as the boy takes his next step forward. The air feels suffocating, but the civilians are confused. All they see is that the villains suddenly fall all of a sudden. And Deku turns to the family with a smile. Are you okay? Uh-huh, yeah. Kneeling to them, Izuku holds his hand forward, the bruises on it. The scars from repeated battle, even reverse cursed energy couldn't mask it. They were clear, and yet he still had this smile, and using that smile and his quirk, he healed their injuries and in an instant erased their scars. Are, are you okay, young man? Before he can answer, however, Deku abruptly stands and warps away as we find him in the air. 
he sprouts wings before blasting forward and heading to a new destination. When he lands, he finds a bunch of civilians and amidst them is the villain dictator. So you're the infamous hero. You're pretty banged up, kid. Taking on everything by yourself. You're indeed as he described. <sighs> another idiot. Before he can even say another word, the villain finds himself falling to the fist of the child. Huh? He's whammed to the sky as he spins before landing back down with what should be his cracked bones healing instantly due to Izuku. All the civilians happily thank him and begin to run off however quickly because they're just extremely scared right now. But Deku is happy they didn't stop to admire him or say anything. I knew it. This is more natural. Protect yourselves, your families. The age of heroes is over. Oi, Deku! Dropping in from above at this point, Bakugo lands before his best friend. How you been? Gotcha. You shouldn't be here. Slowly, one by one, everyone of Class 1A begins to appear and are related that he at least looks like he's been trying to take care of himself more lately. But we're worried about you, Izuku, said Uraka. Thanks, but I'm really fine, guys. What about Rika then, shouts Kirishima. If anyone cares about you more than any of us, it's her Midoriya. Don't do this to her. With a grunt, Deku then leaps off, sprouting wings, when Bakugo chases after, firing a piercing armor shot using his cluster, which Deku meets with his arm, which is pushed aside, when from above, spikes of ice drop. With a spin, he kicks off of one and then another and begins to rise higher and higher as he retracted his wings. I can't sense them clearly. Of course I can't, they're not trying to hurt me. Izu, let them take you home. As he hears Rika's voice, it freezes him, allowing Sora to wrap him up and start dragging him towards a specific building, but he breaks out. All of you, go home! As he uses the power of the sigil, they're, um, they're not affected. He realizes that they're also wearing earplugs. He is then hit by a sonic blast from Jiro. Hey Midori, I remember when you helped me organize my notes for the festival? Maybe it didn't mean much to you, but it meant a lot to me. That was a festival, this is different. As his body begins to flow with domain amplification, he lets himself land. Nobody else gets hurt this way. So you admit it, you're getting hurt. As he turns, Deku sees Mario, who disappears, and in a blink of an eye, Deku dodges a punch from him when he's then grabbed by black tendrils and looks down, seeing his senpai releasing them from his hand that he had hit under his cape. Then running forward, he throws him with a swing, but keeps the tendrils attached as Deku struggles to get free. Here he's waiting for you, Midoriya. Your mother is... You know these calls aren't enough. Don't mention them. With a scream, he breaks out and flies off. His true emotions begin to show. He's crying. He saved everyone, but the barriers that will hold up, even if, even if they stay there, eventually people will crumble. His friends chose to go after him, but not everyone is like them. And if he returns, there will be collateral damage some way, somehow. However, at this moment is when Ida is flung past him at intense speed, courtesy of the ice ramp, along with all those people capable of pushing him, including Mirio, helping him speed up and get there. He grabs Deku's hand and promises to never let go. His glass is gone, and yet he can barely see, and yet he still sees his friend in pain. Let go, Ida. Just stop. It's ingenium. You know that, Midoriya. I'll traverse any field, no matter how rough, to reach any lost child. I need to force him off. Uh, I've always been this tired. We're coming your way, Kirishima. As he and Deku begin to fall, Kirishima waits for him and catches them both as he skids back through the road and stays unrelenting as he bears with the pressure. We know it's a lot, Midoriya, but you're not some Superman. I'll admit it's pretty manly, but it takes a real man to admit when to ask for help. He slowly lets them down and Ida dusts himself off and thanks Kirishima for catching them. That must have been quite hard. But Deku forces himself up from his grasp and feels the other students arrive on the scene. He turns to see them all. You guys, you're bruised. Don't you your tail? I'll heal. I did it willingly. Just come back home. And then what? I'm not thinking about whether or not I can beat Shigaraki or all for one, but the scars left that day, they'll be immense. That's why we're all here, dipshit. God, you really don't listen when you're angry. I'm not angry. Yeah, you are. I know you, Isuku. Sometimes I know you better than you know yourself. So as your friend, I'll tell you, 
come back. Just doing that. Funny enough, you're acting like someone who has some real hero syndrome. I know this isn't... You know this isn't some comic book, right? We all know you're strong, but we're not here to be saved. I won't have you treating us like some pieces on a board. That's exactly what the heroes you hate do. So answer me, Deku, and it better be yes. Say yes, I'm coming home or I'll break every bone in your body and drag you back if I have to. I must have sounded like a complete dick, huh? Thinking you couldn't keep up? I'm sorry. As he begins to fall forward, Bakugo runs and catches him. Just do what I say for once, damn it. God, you're a piece of work. Gathering around quickly, one day finally gets a close-up of his body, and it is riddled with scars, even more than he's hiding under, which became more and more deep as he lost energy. One cannot use reverse curse technique perfectly forever, so he put most of it into healing people and a little bit towards, well, some civilians, but very little towards himself. You think they'll let him stay? asked Sarah. Oh, I'd love to hear them say no, said Bakugo. After everything he's done, I hear one peep and I kick them out myself. Control yourself, Katsuki, said Ida. You know why they're scared. Freaking cows, regardless. Once he gets enough strength back, he'll heal all of this. Rika, you there? The curse arrives on the scene, asking if Izuku's okay, and Uraka says that he'll be okay. It's time for you to go home. Hours then pass. And in you go, shouts Kirishima. He and the boys hurl Izuku into the bath as they gather and and would just lather him, aggressively rinse him off before then letting him rest in the water. <sighs> Midoriya, don't drown, shouts Mineta. As he helps him raise his head above the water, everyone notices that he's blinking in and out of consciousness. Sorry guys, I'm a little worn, and that's why you shouldn't be left alone. What now, asks Izuku? I mean, I'm back and all, but do you guys have any clues on all for one? Not yet. Looking back, he sees Mirio and Tamajiki arrive. Guys, hey. Everything hurts. Well, we did warn you. I'll heal everything normally after a bit of rest. How's Eri? Koda. My mom. Oh, dude, don't be so down. God, we didn't bring you back for a pity party. Just go and say hi after. They'll be fine, said Bakugo. They might call you stupid a few times. Eh, <sighs> yeah. Oh, that's well I deserve. He slowly dozes off again, and at this point, everyone sighs, saying that he can just wake him up in a few. In the meantime, they can just not let him drown. With the stakes of battle rising, certain countries like the U.S. began to make their moves and all agreed to deplore their strongest hero. She rides off on a flight jet, a fight jet, my bad, and many more follow in a formation as she stares forward, soon finding her enemy. Are you the villain they call all for one? Mm, good question. Who am I? Riding in on Anomu, Tomura is forever changed. Now destruction incarnate. Stars and Stripes companions ask what they have to do, but she says, We smash them to pieces. As he stacks three quirks on top of one another, Shigaraki releases a massive electromagnetic sound wave, which the, de uh, the jets barely avoid when the American hero then holds her arms forward. The air 100 meters ahead of me does not exist. A star encases Shigaraki in space, and in that space, there is no oxygen. That quirk is brutal. I want it. From afar, Hawks and Best Genus ride out on the road, and they are told that Stars and Stripe has begun her battle with Shigaraki. I really don't want to do it, said Hawks. You have to. Not that I don't agree that this is ridiculous. With a sigh, Hawks then holds the phone to his ear, and it rings as someone picks up. Midoriya, Mirio, Kotsky, move in. Yes, sir. With a nod towards one another, we see the three standing atop the veil of a shelter, and they blast forward. Izuku sprouts wings, and Bakugo kicks off of his own explosions, no longer just using it from his hands, and Mirio combines float with his black whip as they head for the fight currently occurring. It takes them approximately 10 minutes, and then they leave the flight to Izuku as they hang on while he rises higher and higher, reaching to find... As he reaches for stars and stripes his face, her people shout for her to kill him, but that would mean that they'd be caught in the crossfire of her following attack. She's a hero. She can't do that. 
It was a good life. Just then, however, a mass of golden energy wraps around her, with Shigaraki's arm coming to a stop. Looking down, she finds Izuku who shouts, Move! She kicks the air, changing her application of rules instinctively to get out of there as Miro reaches Shigaraki, wrapping him with the black whip and slinging him back towards himself to blow his internal organs to paste with the liver punch. Then from above, the foot of Bakugo drops, containing a detonation, sending him crashing down towards the ocean, which he crashes into. The two boys then stay afloat as Izuku flies past them and reaches the American hero, covering her with reverse curse technique. But you shouldn't have done that. It's you, isn't it? What, have we met before? No, I heard about you. A lot. Boys, you can fall out. But we can help. You can't do this alone. Oh, I never was. I mean... But, even I can tell, he's gone. You sent the fear of God through him, kid. Hey, yeah, well, I can't take all the credit. Damn right, I cracked a skull in two. Run, sissy. Ha! <laughs> As he makes his escape from the battle and stays underwater, Shigaraki is left angered that he got interrupted. But the final battle is drawing near. And next time, it'll be my win. Because I'm wearing you down, Izuku Midoriya. A day then passes. When he returns to training and they're soon planning to fight and they use the backyards of Yue as their training ground. Each are trying to figure out new ways to battle and Izuku has uncovered a new quirk in his factor again. As he claps, Bakugo swings with an explosion chasing after him in the air but he disappears and finds himself crashing to the floor face first. God, what the hell? Izuku then lands saying, yeah this is gonna be fun. Bakugo sits up wiping the dirt off his face. You're enjoying this, aren't you? <laughs> yep. Oh, come on. I won't use it like that again. Uh, by the way, have you seen Naoyama? Kirishima then approaches saying that he was going to say the same thing. He's been looking a bit gloomier lately. I wasn't even here. Thanks, Izuku. Oh, wait. I'll be back. He runs further into the forest as he remembers actually seeing him running into it a few um, minutes back. So he goes in and while running, Rika pops her head out. Why is he hiding? But well, we're about to find out. He continues running when he then stops. He hears cries and quickly hides behind a tree. He hears Aoyama's voice. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I, I can't, Mama, Papa. It's too hard. You have to. You know that all for one. You know what he's going to do to you. He'll kill us all. Midoriya is left wide-eyed as he hears these words, but he quickly calms down and steps out, ruffling leaves and catching the attention of the mother, the father, and the son. Izuku smiles. You haven't talked in a while, huh, Aoyama? Midoriya. Oh my god, Midoriya. Sorry for not asking what's wrong. Not very... Not very hero-like. Every time, USJ, even in the forest, you get stop. Every time it was me, Midoriya, I'm a despicable villain. Quickly grabbing him, his parents begin to run when Izuku shouts to wait as he runs after them, but the parents shout that they not blame their son. This is our fault. We wanted to give him a better life. And that man, that monster, he tricked us. We have no excuse, but please leave him alone. Stop. As they freeze in their tracks from the command is when Hagakure runs out. Her gloves are shown and Izuku notices her presence without even looking back. What exactly was going through your head all this time, Aoyama? All this time hanging out with us, she shouts. We could have died. Hagakure, stop it. Don't do that. This isn't him. This isn't his parents. This is all for one. That man doesn't see people as people. He just sees them as pawns. Even his own allies. Aoyama, I know you're afraid. About the next words that will come from my mouth. And you think you're so unforgivable. Well, here's the unforeseeable. I forgive you. As he grabs a hold of his shoulders, he releases him and his parents. And leaves his friend in complete shock. I forgive you. You're just a kid who wanted to fit in. I can't imagine how strong you had to have been. How much guilt your parents felt. I'll call everyone. I have to, but don't worry. I'm with you all the way. May I ask that the children leave the room? Asked Nezu. Tied to a chair, Aoyama watches as his friends enter and are left dumbfounded by what they heard next. No, you may not, said Todoroki. Dude, tell us this is a joke, shouts Kirishima. 
it just doesn't make sense. Present is also Tsukauchi, along with All Might, who, as their teacher, is extremely distraught. None is more hurt, however, than Aozawa. Sadly, we're struggling to restore the law and order. This isn't as cutthroat as before, said Tsukauchi. Just tell us all you can about all for one, for a start. We know nothing, said the father. They followed his orders, and if we betrayed him, he'd kill us. He showed us a demonstration. It's the death. And you still plan to support him, asked Nezu. As he looks to Izuku, Izuku says, of course. This is what he does. He manipulates people. He uses them against each other. We're not going to make the same mistake. Aoyama, I told you I forgive you. He used you. He made you his puppet. He played with his heart. Doesn't that piss you off? No one should just be able to do that. Not to the people I care about. I don't really know what's going to happen now. I've never been this angry. But I know you all feel the same. If you need a better reason, however, detective, right now he is the only one who can fool all for one. As this realization hits, they all know they have a chance to at least catch him off guard or just catch him because Deku's here. They don't got to worry about none of that. Regardless, Aoyama for now must be taken into custody. But this was the last straw that broke the camel's back. The entirety of 1A gathers to their dorms after this. We better prepare, said Ida. I'll fix my costume up, said Kirishima. And we're going to bring him down no matter what. Sigakure. Midoriya. As his name is heard, Izuku turns and sees Mirio, who asks if this is the right time. I have to tell you something. It's about one for all. I've made a different decision. Now we're going to have a little time skip. Don't ever do something like that again. As she hits him over and over, Izuku winces in pain. Mom, okay, I get it. She then hugs him. Oh, you're such an idiot. Yeah, yeah, I know. All around him, his friends um, say goodbye to their parents as well as they prepare to leave the shelter. They're going to move to a new fortress, their new home away from home. They're located about 30 kilometers from the school and have used um, a lot of time here to get prepared, you know, get ready, relax, but it's not that easy. So they have to prepare for a plan of attack. They don't know if there are spies in there with them. And there are, if you've read the manga. So, yeah. Nothing's going to be the same for a while. But they're going to keep soldiering on. Or heroing on, I guess. What is All for One's plan? What did Miro tell Izuku? Find out in the next part of Boku no Hero Academia. Been your boy. Peace. I'm gone.